Hello and welcome to this next video on learning AIM A modern technologies. Today we're going to look at cloud storage and cloud computing. Today's lesson objectives will look at the following. We're going to describe features and uses of cloud storage. We're then going to look at describing features and uses of cloud computing. And finally, we're going to be able to describe how the selection of platforms and services will impact on the use of cloud technologies. We need to make sure that we can identify the difference between cloud storage and cloud computing because a lot of students make mistakes in the exam on this topic. The cloud is another name for services offered via the internet. The cloud can be split into two major areas. These are cloud storage and cloud computing. We're going to look at these today. Firstly, let's look at cloud storage. Cloud storage allows users to store files and data on the internet. It tends to be more sophisticated than offline storage. Now, when we talk about offline storage, this could be saving the file directly to your device. For example, saving on your phone or your laptop. Features often include data can be stored in multiple locations. This means you can access your files stored on the cloud storage in your house, when you're on holiday in America, when you're on the train, or when you're in school. A professional company will manage the data storage. Now this third party will store the data on their servers. This can be very beneficial, however it can lead to many drawbacks such as the security levels which we'll look at later in this video. Let's take a look at cloud storage features. The first one we're going to look at is synchronization of devices to the cloud. Apple released various devices each are now able to share files using cloud storage. An example could be a student completing their coursework on their MacBook. However, they can then store the file on the cloud and continue working on it on their iPad whilst they visit their friend's house. They can then open up the file on the cloud storage using their smartphone whilst they're on their way to school and hand it into their teacher. This has been successful because the latest file is stored on the cloud and has been updated on the different devices. You also gain 24 seven access to your cloud storage file. This means you can access the file at 3 a.m. or 3 p.m. depending on the time of need. By using cloud storage, you also only require one version online rather than multiple ver file versions on different devices. This can save you storage space and ensure you are working on the latest version of the file. Another benefit of cloud storage is that you only pay for storage used. We're going to look at a topic called scalability in a second. This explains why this is an advantage. Scalability. Scalability is the ability to store files online, but to increase or reduce the size that you require. Now, cloud storage normally charges for the amount of storage that you use. This is similar to your data plans on your mobile phone where you can increase or reduce the amount of data that you receive each month. If, for example, I purchased a 100 gigabytes hard drive for my laptop, however, I only store one gigabytes of files, then I will have 99 gigabytes that is not being used. This means that I've spent money on storage that is not being used, and this money could have been saved and used elsewhere. Now, using cloud storage means that one month you may use one gigabyte and therefore pay a small fee, the next month you may then have storage capacity of 10 gigabytes, but then the following month you may then go back down to one gigabyte of storage capacity, again reducing the fee that you pay. So, when we upload files to the cloud storage, where do they actually go? Now, similar to a call centre, where businesses like BT place all their employees in the same building to answer the phone calls, the online storage companies also hold all their data stored by their users in a building known as a data center. Having all the user's data in one location could be a risk. Therefore, we need to consider what protections can we put in place of the data centers to make sure that they are secure. There are many ways that we can keep our data center secure. If we put physical security onto the building, such as door entry locks, or we have security staff and guards, or we could have a fire system that automatically recognizes smoke to release water to put out the fire, then this will keep the data secure in the building. We could also create backups. 
We could have a backup of the files that stores both on-site and off-site in case the building burns down. But we could also have power backups using generators and batteries. So if our power is lost, our data center can still operate using the backup generator. Now, these are all physical protection methods to stop a person actually walking into the building and destroying the servers or gain access to the files. But we can also use software tools to protect the files that we will look at now. One way of keeping the files safe using software is called access rights. Now, cloud storage allows different users to be given different access rights. This is similar to in your school, where when you log into your system, you will be able to access many different files ranging from the student share, the staff share, or your own documents. The different access rights that you have been assigned will allow you to view the different files or folders. We can also set access rights to individual files. For example, in our student share, a PowerPoint presentation may be on read only, so you can view the presentation material. However, the worksheet that you need to complete for your teacher could have edit access rights so you can open the file up and type on it to submit your responses. This is the same with cloud storage, where one person, such as Alicia, can view and edit the files. However, the owner, Carson, can view, edit and delete the files. We have taken a look at cloud storage. Now let's look at cloud computing. This is where online applications do most of their computing and processing in the cloud. You can access these through your web browser, such as Internet Explorer, or apps on your mobile device. Now, what could be two examples of cloud computing applications that we use? The first one could be Google Docs. Many students use Google Docs to access a word processing software online so they can type up a report or essay that they are having to hand in. You may have also noticed in Google Docs that there is an option for slides which allows you to create an online presentation. A second example of cloud computing applications is Microsoft Office 365. Again, they allow you to access their popular software, such as Microsoft Word or Microsoft PowerPoint online to complete your work. As well as using online applications to complete word processing and presentation material using G Suite or Office 365, there is also specialist software that companies can access online. These are accounting and CRM. CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management that allows a business to manage how they maintain customer relations and track their sales data. What are the advantages of using cloud computing software rather than using software on your device? Have a think. There are many advantages of using online software rather than using the software on your devices. These range from the consistency of versions of the software between users. If you and 10 other students are working on a file, if you are using your own devices, someone may have an older version of Microsoft Word to you. Whereas by using online applications, you will all use the same online word processing software and therefore you will have access to the same tools and formatting features. Everyone can also edit the most up-to-date copy of a file. Because you are accessing it online, you will be able to see version 6 and then work on to version 7. Whereas if the files were stored on people's devices, you may be updating a version and then realise there's a later version on someone else's device already. Versions of files can be regularly automatically saved. So as you're working on your Google Docs, you'll notice that it comes up saying that your file has been saved every few moments automatically. You will also see that your files are automatically backed up, so if your file is lost, you can recover the backup online automatically. You can access your files from different computers in the world. This depends on if you've got an internet connection. However, it does mean that if you're on holiday, you can still access your files online to complete important work. And it also does not require any specialist software to install, so therefore it's cheaper and easier for staff to set up. Let's look at platforms. A platform is the computer hardware and operating system that runs on it. When we talk about hardware, we are looking at things like mice or keyboards or touchscreen input for the system. More recently, you may have noticed that systems are using voice commands such as your Alexa. An example of platforms and operating systems can be your Windows 10 running on your PC or laptop, 
your smartphone running your Android platform, and also an Amazon Echo device running the Fire operating system. We're now going to look at features such as the screen size and processor speed that will impact which platform you pick. There are many platform features for us to consider. We will look at some of the key ones now. The first one is the input method. Are we going to use a keyboard? Are we going to use speech with our voice, touch controls, or are we going to have a game controller to input data into the system? How portable is the device? Do you need to be able to move around with that device once it's being used? If so, you're going to need it to be durable, which means that it will not break easily. This also brings us on to the hard disk technology. We could use magnetic storage, or we could use more recent solid state drives, which are more expensive than the magnetic storage. However, they do not have any moving parts, so therefore are more robust. And this is useful on devices that you want to move around with, such as your laptop. Which cloud platform should we use? Now, this will be different for different individuals or businesses when they want to store and provide the service to be used. Considerations should be made for the following aspects. The price may increase while subscribing to the service. If you are going to be paying for one cloud platform that is very expensive, you may look for an alternative which is much cheaper. Regular updates may happen without being wanted and may require step training. You may notice on one cloud platform that each week there is an update, which means that your staff no longer know how to use that system. And this can be very frustrating for the users. A different company will be responsible for the security of the data being stored. So if I use, for example, Google for my cloud platform, are they going to keep that data encrypted and secure? Whereas if I use Microsoft, they may have no encryption on the files, so my data would be at risk. And the last factor to consider is how easy is the system to use for staff? If your staff can't use the cloud platform, then they will not. Another factor to consider is the interface design. How does the device look to the user? Now, traditionally, platforms use a screen, mouse, and a keyboard. However, devices are now changing to have buttons, touch screens, and voice commands, so therefore you can communicate with the device in many different ways. Another factor to consider is the cost of online services. There are different models used to charge people to use cloud services. One example is YouTube, which you're watching right now. This model will have some free versions of videos where you have to have advertising included to support the video. There could be a paid for monthly subscription, which removes the adverts. But you could also get a family membership which allows multiple users to view the videos ad free. This is similar to your Netflix accounts, where the online service that they offer will differ depending on the number of viewers that you want to access the programs at the same time. A lot of students often have difficulties in understanding the differences between cloud storage, cloud computing and cloud technology. So just to confirm, cloud storage is where you save the files online which can then be accessed online. Cloud computing is the process of completing tasks using online applications, so actually doing the work online. Cloud technology is the devices used to access the cloud storage or cloud computing, so the actual hardware parts that you use to go online. 